Saturday morning. And that means it's time to catch up on the local and statewide high school sports scene. Welcome to High School Sports Talk on ESPN Radio 94.1. Now, here are your hosts, Matt Hatfield and Coach Ed Young. Good Saturday morning to you on this 20th day of April. It is Easter weekend here on High School Sports Talk. Presented by VirginiaPreps.com on ESPN Radio 94.1. I am Matt Hatfield. I'm the coach, Ed Young. Wearing his New York Yankees polo. Did you buy that when you went to Camden Yards, or was that no, already in the given closet? given to me as a gift, believe it or not. Phil Forbes give it to you? No, for, no Phil Forbes did not give it to me. Uh, Danny Mitchell give it to you? Danny Mitchell didn't give it to me. Uh, Thomas Simmons, our producer nope. engineer, give it to you? Nope. Thomas hates the Yankees, so he will never give Good job, Thomas. The Yankees, I don't like him either. Uh, he would give you. But a I like the Phillies. See, see Thomas. See, see how a member you, make, no, you can't like a New York and a Philly team. That's like like in a New York and a I, Boston. I, I like the Phillies before Harper got. And to that's himself. like also being a fan of the Raiders and the Steelers. They're beating up my guy Mike Mayock. By the way, everywhere, everywhere, TV, radio, and listen, Mike. I think Mike Mayock knows the draft better than anybody. I'm not saying he's he's the smartest guy in America, but I tell you what, he watches more film and studies the draft. So I'm a, I'm a, if I'm a Raiders fan, which I know you are, I have faith in. Mike Mayock. I don't know why everybody's bashing I think him. I think he's, if not the best, he's certainly up there. The, the roll call ain't long when you talk about the best for the draft. That's so. just me. I but, mean. but the bottom line with the draft is, come on now, it's a crapshoot. Go back over the years and look at the draft. How many Hall of Famers are uh, um, after the first round? There's a ton of them. There are a lot. And uh, we, we don't want to give away our trivia uh, questions for this week, but how many players last year from the 757 got drafted? Do you remember? I'm gonna say five. I mean, you looked up. You looked it up, didn't you? No, I didn't. I it was five. five. Was it five? It was five. Andrew okay, Brown where's my prize? A, you don't get a prize. See, you get to, you get to come when back right, next week. That's your prize. We keep the other week. Andrew Brown at Oscar Smith. Josh Sweat at Oscar Smith. Jalen Holmes out of Lake Taylor. Trenton Cannon out of Kickatan, who was the surprise one, the sixth rounder to the Jets out of Virginia State, and the highest pick of them all. Uh, Third round, just uh, around ahead of Holmes, was uh, Derek Nadi at Ocean Lakes to the Kansas City Chiefs. There you go. You know how many players who played high school football in the state of Virginia were taken in the NFL draft last year? Played high school football high in the state of Virginia. High school football in the state of Virginia got drafted. Take one, move the one over there, subtract two. We actually put this out on VirginiaPreps.com last year, and, and it, went, it went viral. Everybody picked it up, and I actually did a few different uh, interview spots. I'm say Lucky this. 13. You're really close. Too high, too low. You're one low, 14. Ooh. 14. Not bad. We've got a lot to do on this edition of High School Sports Talk, brought to you by VirginiaPreps.com and the Portsmouth Invitational Tournament going out. Today's the last day for the PIT. I was out there. Coach Young was out there. Uh, a lot of good action over at the Portsmouth Invitational Tournament. Championship game tonight at 7 o'clock over at Churchland High in Portsmouth. I forgot their team name, so forgive me. I just know it's Paul Hall's team against Kenny Harris's team. For the title? Yeah. That's Portsmouth. Well, I should say, let me say, Portsmouth? Paul Hall and Charles Thomas, the coaches with, I believe Brandon Rush is their NBA coach, yeah. against Kenny Harris, P.J. Honoré, and I forgot. Xavier who. Silas. Very good. That's why we keep you around, to remember the things I forget. I, I remember once, once in a while here. I'm not too old yet. No relation to Paul Silas, though, right? No, but okay. he played a little bit in the NBA. He that's the uh, championship game. I want to say that's is that Portsmouth, Portsmouth partnership against yeah, sales systems against sales system. I think don't quote it. me on that, but I know it's their teams, and I know Justin Robinson is on uh, the team with Coach Honoré and Coach Harris from Virginia Tech. Had a game winner the night we were there on Wednesday to begin the PIT. So going over to PortsmouthInvitational dot com for more details, the box scores, all the good stuff, and the history of the PIT. In fact, later on, you know what we got to do? We haven't played it in five years or so. My in honor of the the Jazz trying to come back from two nil to make our buddy uh, Kyle Hightower feel better, Thomas, since he's down the dumps. We're going to play back the probably towards the end of the show the the short interview I did with John Stockton at the PIT luncheon about four or five years ago. In honor of the PIT, that was probably the people ask me who's the, the your favorite person to interview or talk to. That's probably the top of the list for me. Probably is. It would only be bested by. If I got a chance to interview Carl Malone, maybe Kurt Warner, but definitely Carl Malone, and uh, got to meet Larry Fitzgerald, did not interview him. We took a selfie, and I looked terrible in the selfie. So, who would be your Ed? It would be I never asked you this as a coach. Who would be your favorite person to interview? Oh boy, um, 
I mean, you're a Yankee fan, so I would think it's probably some person, Derek Jeter. Well, maybe I'd have to go. No, I'd have to go way back. My boyhood idol, Mickey Mantle. Oh, Mickey Mantle. Okay, number seven. Sweet I was two. thinking Bill Russell. See, Bill Russell would be a fascinating interview. The problem with Bill Russell is he might flip you the bird yeah, while you're interviewing cuss, him. He will definitely cuss you out. He, he might. But if I want a great interview, I'd go back to my other boyhood idol, Wilt Distilt Chamberlain, because he could tell you stuff that has nothing to do with basketball. Well, he's not alive, but yes, he could. There's no doubt about no that. Doubt about it. He I set imagine, records. I imagine you guys could have. Uh, he set long, records on and off the court. You, you and you and Wilt the Still, the Big Dipper, would have some lengthy conversations. What about you, Thomas? Who would be if you had to interview one person in in all of sports all time? Who would the person be? Bobby Bowden, of Ooh. Florida State, or or James Franklin, but Bobby Bowden. We can maybe arrange the James Franklin thing. I, I don't know in person. We maybe pull that off. We have some connections. They do come down here for those camps with Old Dominion and Bobby Wilder and them. We might be able to arrange that for you. We might be able to pull that Bobby off. Bobby had the best like random sayings, too. The dad gum like and all that stuff. Yeah. words that, that yeah. were just dad so wholesome gum? somehow. Bobby Bowden, yeah. And it, I don't think he's appreciated enough uh, for what he did in college football. I know Jimbo Fisher came right behind him and ended up winning a national championship, but Florida State every year was an automatic 10 wins, it seemed. So uh, there you have it. Uh, today on High School Sports Talk... Presented by VirginiaPreps.com and the PIT. We're going to speak with, in about 15 minutes or so, Roland Wright. He is the head baseball coach of the Western Branch Bruins. They're always in the mix for championships at the regional and the state level. So we'll get an idea on how his team is doing. I think they got to a slow start, but they're picking it up, and their pitching has been lights out in a couple of games. They've gotten some great starts in the last couple of weeks, some long starts and tons of strikeouts. So we'll chat about how the Bruins are doing on the diamond with Roland Wright coming up in about 15 minutes or so here on High School Sports Talk presented by VirginiaPreps.com on ESPN Radio 94.1. We'll also have interviews with Marcus Carter, who we caught up with at the PIT out of Bruton High School in Williamsburg and an All-American at Christopher Newport University. And uh, Ed didn't get the invite to the PIT. Nonetheless, he's probably one of the more accomplished Division Three players, I'd say, in our area since, I dare say, Brandon Adair at Virginia Wesleyan. And then in terms of CNU, the only one that I can think of off the top of my head, and there's a lot of good ones, uh, Mike Holland, who's coaching in the PIT at Church and High School, had some records there, steals and assists. But maybe Lamont Struthers in Menchville comes to mind, who did play in the NBA and got drafted. Uh, but Marcus Carter is certainly one of the more accomplished players, so we'll chat with him about his uh, career, high school, college, and the next step for him. Yeah, I got a feeling. I got a feeling he'll be playing pro ball somewhere. Yeah, even if it's do. not here in the, in the U.S. and in the, in the NBA level, I think overseas he can make some money. And his story overcoming some injuries is pretty neat as well. And um, we're actually going to play an interview back too that uh, AJ Robinson. For those of you who don't know who AJ Robinson, he, he used to be a basketball player at. Potomac Falls High School and Middleburg Academy. We covered them quite a bit on VirginiaPreps.com, in fact. And uh, he caught up recently with Tyrod Taylor out of Hampton High School. In fact, A.J. played his college hoops at Mary Washington. They're an ODAC rival of Virginia Wesleyan, right? I believe so. Yeah. Division three school. Yeah. Uh, Had a nice career there. Averaged uh, over about 10, 11 points this, this final season for him there. I think it was about a year or two ago. And uh, he caught up with Tyrod Taylor out of Hampton High, the Quarterback now backing up, I believe it's Phillip Rivers with the L.A. Chargers, the former Hokie and Crabber. So uh, we'll play that back here on the program as well to get uh, Tyrod's thoughts on how things are in the NFL and his journey to the highest level of professional football. Did, like did you watch any of the game last night? The, there was actually three games last night. I NBA. saw... Bits and pieces. Well, well, if you were watching the Celtics Pacers game, you were you were disturbed by the weather map for crying out loud. And I listen, there's some boomers going on out there. Oh, the, I, I'm not trying to diminish the severity of uh, bad weather when there's thunderstorms that are severe and even tornado watches and warnings. I, I totally get that. I'm not trying to destroy our buddies from uh, Channel 13 WVEC, but here I go. Uh, listen, we, we don't need to have the O.J. Simpson redo of 1994 NBA Finals where you got the game in the little tiny screen and then the chase, I'm sorry, the weather and the big screen. Just go to when you have commercials. And, or look, you have your screens taken up by the little uh, 
tickers going on and little flashing things on the screen. So, I mean, goodness, that the entire first quarter was blocked out by that. You would have had to have a microscope to see what happened in the first quarter, unless well, you had an and, NBA. And again, app. we we both get it. Don't let it. Don't start getting calls or people. Are <laughs> we already got one. Somebody's getting yeah, ready. That's up. mad that we're not worried about people's safety. Absolutely. I are. am. Listen, I, I am thought a hurricane was coming. It was. It was pretty bad out there. I mean, it was just. Well, it got me though, and it was just all three stations. So I'm not trying to pick on thirteen. Ten and three did as well. Well, I was a couple of them were doing shadow puppets with their hands doing the weather. I thought we had shadow puppets on TV. My thing is, look, I get it. We don't need to have they. I think one of them went. I forgot which station, so I'm not trying to be super mean here. One of them went two hours forty five minutes without taking a commercial break. Now I'm wow. going to weather man. I had to use a bathroom in two hours forty five minutes without a break. So I don't know how they pulled that off. Well, you, you can't take a break. That's all there is to it. You're the weather, no, I mean, goodness. I know it was bad out there. I was actually not in the area. I was in uh, the Richmond. You were in eight oh four. Yeah, and let me say this. It was bad up there, too. I they heard. had some boomers going on up yeah. there, too. And um, um, the people, they let people out of work early up there. I saw that. Yeah, the traffic was mm-hmm. unbelievable early. And I, had, I went up earlier in the day. It was unbelievable. So it, you take it serious, and you should. Because if it prevents any kind of loss of life, absolutely you could. But, you know, sometimes after the fact, when nothing happens, and that's kind of what happens around us here, we, we kind of get a like get mad because nothing real bad happened. True. You don't want nothing real bad happening. No, you don't. I just I was perplexed the entire first quarter they did that. I you know, I thought it, I thought it was the the Knicks and the uh Rockets, the OJ chase again. Uh more to do here on high school sports talk. Give us a call at 757-687-9494. Anything you want to talk about in the world of sports, high school sports is our main specialty at 757-687-9494. We got the one and only Keith from Smithfield coming up. Roland Wright, head baseball coach at Western Branch, too. Don't go anywhere. It's ESPN Radio 94.1. Recapping another busy week of prep sports. It's high school sports talk on ESPN Radio 94.1. Back here on high school sports talk presented by VirginiaPreps.com. You're on ESPN Radio 94.1. We've got uh, Coach Roland Wright coming up a bit here from Western Branch, baseball coach. Phone lines are open for you to call us at 757-687-9494. That's area code 757-687-9494. We talk to the one and only Keith from Smithfield. Keith, how you doing today? How you doing, Matt? How you doing? How you doing this morning? He's doing better than I am. I'm battling a cold. Matt's under the weather, Keith, and um, I I think I'm okay, except for, again, this bum knee. Yeah, I feel good. I got sick yesterday. I had a terrible cold yesterday. You must have gave it to Matt. It's going around with all that pollen out there, let me tell you. Yes, sir. Uh, all things about the NBA last night, man. I ain't never seen so much trash talking in, in, in my life. And I'm training uh, Russell Westbrook and uh, and Damon Lillard. Russell Westbrook, he, he, he can trash talk a little bit. Uh, he can. I think a lot of bit. In fact, if you ask him a question and your name is uh, – Barry uh, Trammell from the Oklahoma paper. He's always going to answer it with next question. He doesn't want to answer any questions. Yes, and uh, also next week you got some undefeated team two powerhouse going at next week. Uh, Mitchell and Hampton Crabbers. They'll go ahead. I think next week they're going to be a, they're going to be a shootout. It should be. We had on both Phil Forbes of Mitchville and Danny Mitchell of Hampton, who I think his Crabbers are still unbeaten. So they didn't fall victim to the jinx. They have Trey Morgan going to VMI leading the way. Mitchville, you know, they have some uh, versatile pieces in their arsenal, uh, both in terms of hitting and pitching. And uh, P5, Phil Forbes' uh, grandson there. Uh, that figures to be a game that could have uh, some momentum changes. Could be could be one of those games, Keith, where it's a pitcher's duel early and then it breaks out into an offensive uh, battle and a lot of runs at the end. Yeah, I also, uh, one thing I've seen, a lot of teams, uh, y'all don't understand, uh, Parkview, they, they undefeated. I saw them play Southampton and they, they, they went to us like it was nothing, 8 to nothing uh, with a final score. Just um, Parkview got undefeated. They are undefeated in that district and they tend to know. Well, well, I thought it can't go in the district. Well, remember, Parkview was the one seed last year in Region 3A, Keith. And then what happened? They won their quarterfinal game over Phoebus ten to nothing, and then they ran into the fifth seed Hopewell and fell four to three. So, I wouldn't say we are sleeping on Parkview completely. I just wonder when they see a variety of teams, not just the Tri Rivers District teams. They see some teams from the eight hundred four out of the Central District, such as a Hopewell and some Bay Rivers teams. Uh, how they're going to stack up against them come playoff time. But Coach Young has some good news for you on Southampton. We might have a couple of Southampton baseball guests as soon as next week, is it? Possibly? Yeah, Keith, we're efforting to get Coach Jenkins and uh, uh, 
uh, maybe more than one of his senior players. Uh, he was We had set him up for today. He had to cancel out for today, so we're hoping next Saturday. Yes, sir. And um, they're great kids at Southampton, and they, they got they got the guys coming back in basketball. They got internal guys coming back, and um, they're gonna be a, they're gonna be a team. The team gonna be beating this year. Southampton is the basketball team. Yeah, I figured they're going to have a lot of pieces to to handle there, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing how they do in the playoffs in Region 3A because I do think they're going to have a better chance to go deeper this year after the uh, early exit, if you will, in, in baseball, falling to York, the seventh seed, 5-2 to two last year in the Region 3A playoffs. And the last thing, get off air. What you got? Uh, Mike Scott, he uh, he doing a good job in the field at Sixers. Uh, I think Joe B need to, they need to rest Joe B tonight and, and, and let him get Red Hill up. I think Thomas would concur with that. We need to have a Joel Embiid rest, and you would say that uh, with the two-one series lead, maybe Mike Scott gets a little more playing time and shoots some of those elbow jumpers that uh, he is known for. Yes, sir. y'all have a nice weekend. You too, Keith. Hey, happy Easter. Easter to you, Keith. Thanks, same to y'all. So uh, there you have it. When we come back, we're going to be talking with Roland Wright of the Western Branch Bruins, and I think one of his players, I believe it's standout pitcher Antonio Velasquez, who was 10-3 and last year with a 1-2-3 ERA, helping the Bruins reach the 2018 Classic State title game. That's coming your way next on High School Sports Talk. Don't go anywhere. It's what? Recapping another busy week of prep sports, it's High School Sports Talk on ESPN Radio 94.1. Back here on ESPN Radio 94.1, it's High School Sports Talk presented by VirginiaPreps.com with the coach Ed Young. I am Matt Hatfield, joined by a couple of special guests, the head baseball coach of the Western Branch Bruins. They won the state championship in 2017, lost in a title game in 2018, looking to make another deep playoff run here in 2019. That's Roland Wright and one of his standout players, Antonio Velasquez, 10-3 and a year ago with a 1.23 ERA. Uh, we believe he is committed to Brighton Stratton, if I'm not mistaken, for his college baseball. And they're coming off a big win. Good morning, Antonio. Good morning, Coach Wright. How you guys doing? Doing pretty good morning, guys. Go ahead, Antonio. <laughs> I'm doing well. Good morning. How about you? Doing well. Is that right you're going to Brighton Stratton? Yes, sir. All right, we'll get into that a little bit. And, Coach, uh, good morning to you. Coming off a nice win the other day over Nova out of Florida, 6-2. to two. They're ranked number 21 in the country, so had to be proud of how your guys did against a nationally ranked foe, huh? Yeah, good morning, guys. Thanks for having us on, and thanks for giving us the opportunity to talk about our program. But it, it was a good win. You know, we used Florida for a lot of things to, to kind of come together as a group and then kind of judge – Personally, if if I'm teaching the right stuff when we go up against a, a top notch po and and personally see where we are as a program and you know our guys, I challenge our guys to go in that type of environment. It's a, it's a tough environment to play on the road. It's uh, you know they bring a lot of energy when they play there. It's a it's a nice stadium. Um, you know they're always competing for the top notch in Florida. And you know I challenge our guys. Look, this is going to be a hard environment to play in. And, you know, Antonio threw the ball well uh, Thursday night, and uh, we had some guys step up at the plate, and, you know, we had some guys grow up on a, on a big stage. So, you know, we looked at that as a as a regional final game, regional game, and to kind of prepare us for the second half of the season. Absolutely. I'll turn it over to my co-host, the coach, Ed Young, here in a second. But, Antonio, you along with Micah Brown, Harrison, did a week two hits apiece on the mound. You got your fourth win of the season. So, uh, first off, what was working for you on the mound, then also at the bat? Uh, honestly, I was just trusting what Coach Wright was saying. I knew my defense had my bat, especially Micah. Uh, just locating the fastball, trying to keep hitters off balance, and then hitting is just trying to hit the ball hard and do situational hitting, move my runners. Because I know not just me, but my whole lineup will get my back and everything. Hey, Roland, Ed Young here. Uh, first of all, when you said that uh, you're playing these these top-notch teams to see if you're doing things the correct way, the right way, let let me just say this for you. You're doing things the right way. Um, you're winning uh, championships. You're in the finals uh, in the running for it almost every year. So um, from afar, let me just say you're doing things right. So uh, uh, And you got it. You got the name for it. You're doing things the yeah. right way. <laughs> I appreciate that, Coach. But, you know, in this business, we got to self-evaluate ourselves every year. And, you know, if, if, if you're in this profession and – and you can't self-evaluate yourself at the end of year and, and see if you need to change things and correct things. One, you're not you're not doing your players justice, and two, your ego is too big for this profession, and you probably need to find another profession. But you know, I, I humbly appreciate that compliment. But you know, I've been blessed with 
great guys, that, as Antonio will tell you, and other guys that believe in what we teach. And I think that's half the battle in society now is, is getting guys to compete at a high level and getting guys to believe in, in what you teach. And uh, I've just been very blessed to have that group of kids come through our program. But I appreciate the com- compliment, uh, Coach. You know, and you make a great point. And I, I've often said this. People say, you know, you've been a coach myself, been coaching a long time, this and that. You know, you've been where. I say, well, you know what? I study the game. I think I'm right. good at what I do. But you know what? When I when the players do what's asked of them and they do it to the best of their abilities, they can make me look pretty doggone good. <laughs> so it's it's really, it comes down to the players. It really does. And, and you got a good one. You got Antonio now. Antonio, my question to you hearing that you're pitching well and you're hitting well, which one of those two do you, if you can only do one, get a stick and hit a lot, or you can only be on the mound, much like they do in the majors, would you go one way or the other, or am I asking a question way too early for you? Uh, That's hard. I love doing both. Uh, I think it's a little too early for me. I feel like I'm going to just do everything I can right now, and then hopefully it turns out what it could be. Well, uh, and you're right. High school guys – you know, you, you can pitch, you can hit, you can do both. It's great. But it seems as you go up the ladder, and I got a feeling uh, as well as you're playing it, someday you're going to have to make a choice maybe at the pro level, uh, be it in, in the minor leagues at first and into the majors, that they kind of kind of want you either on the mound or or you're getting four or five at-bats a game. So that, that decision may come for you later on. But right now, keep enjoying what you're doing. Yes, sir. Will do. We're chatting with Antonio Velasquez of Western Branch's baseball team, standout pitcher and hitter, as well as the coach rolling right here on High School Sports Talk, presented by VirginiaPreps.com on ESPN Radio 94.1. I'm going to throw it to you, Antonio, first, and I'm going to get Coach Wright to say what makes you special. Tell us about Coach Wright a little bit. What makes him one of the best coaches, not just in the area, but the entire state? Oh, man, there's a lot of stuff. Uh, and, and, Tony, let me interrupt you a second. You're allowed to say whatever you want because <laughs> if you say something negative and Coach gets on you, just tell him you're not going to pitch for the next two weeks. That's all. <laughs> they, they know uh, they have an open window with me, Coach. They have an open window. You can say whatever he wants to. <laughs> Honestly, there's a bunch of stuff. He does everything well. He knows how to play the game. He play, He teaches us how to play it hard. We go down to Florida, which is amazing because it's a different type of baseball. It's faster pace. We see a lot more pitching. Uh, what makes him great is just he takes everything he knew, brings it more, and just keeps adding it on. And plus his resources. We have, like, David Wright, for example. He comes up, tells Coach Wright, hey, he tells us a philosophy. Coach Wright thinks about it, tells it about us, and it just really, like, brings us role models. And uh, Coach Wright, I know you have so many standouts on this team. We'll get to some more of them here in a bit. But, Antonio, what makes him unique and special for your baseball team? You know, I, I, think, he's just been, I think he's just been challenged all his life. He's a competitor. You know, he, he got a tough break when, you know, the fit at Old Dominion didn't really work out. And, you know, he took that as a challenge over the next two years. And, uh, and I think Brian Stratton is, is a beautiful fit for him. I think, you know, Coach Lavelle, what, what greater guy can you go over there a pitching legend in the Hampton Roads area to to teach a young man the game. I, I think he's, I think Antonio is two years out from being something very special at the collegiate level. And, and what type of what better internship than to have with Coach Lavelle and Brian Stratton and what they're doing over there? But you know, I I, I think what was beautiful about Thursday night and Antonio will probably tell you the same thing. He didn't have his best stuff when we went down there last year, and you know, I, I kind of threw him back in the fire again and say, hey, look. You stunk it up here last year, and he stepped up, and you got a big win for us. And I, you know, I just think, you know, he handles the big moments. He's handled it for us in seventeen. He handled it for us in you know eighteen. He pitched his heart out last year in the state semi or state final. We just couldn't. We just ran into a bunch of hot bats, and he'll tell you that. But I just think, you know, he competes, uh, and I think you know he handles adversity very well. And uh, you know, with only two seniors on this year's team, with him and Micah, you know, they've taken a leadership role. Um, and I think, you know, leaders often sometimes lead by voice, by not by action, and, and he's done both of them. So I, I think he's a great leader also. And speak on that I'm going to miss him. I'm going to miss him. Oh, certainly. It sounds like it with what he's done for your baseball team in terms of the production and then just the leadership, which is such a key thing, as both you and Coach Young know, for a team to have that chance to be in position for a championship. And Antonio, speak on uh, last year and just the, the tradition at Western Branch. Every year you're expected to be right there in the mix. A year ago you had some tough battles regionals. You beat Cox out of the gate. 
uh, beat Oscar Smith, a city rival for you. Lost to first Colonial in the region championship, but then you had a couple of nice state tournament wins over uh, Cosby, I think it was, and Thomas Dale before the loss to West Springfield. What is it about this team's second half of the year you guys really get hot, and then also the motivation from last year being so close to the championship? Uh, honestly, everyone just wants to make history. We just want to be become top tier. Uh, Coach Ray says it. After Florida, it's crunch time. Uh, we see a lot more pitching. Again, like I said, top tier. So, honestly, from the transition from Florida to here, it's – it's just great because we've seen top tier, top tier, top tier. No, not saying there's not top tier here, but we just come out hot because we see 90, 89, and then we come here, we see 86, 87. We just see it flat. So we just take care of our small game, our defense, and we just have crunch time here. Uh, we really just want to continue the legacy and everything. Antonio, I got to ask you, being being a, a, a teacher, how is uh, the academics going for you? Uh, I'm doing well. I'm getting a lot better. Baseball's still kind of hard, but I'm doing a need lot. Need to better. be better. You need still. to be better. <laughs> yeah, I need to be. Better. I'm I'm still adjusting to it. Okay, well, because obviously you're moving to that next level where that academics becomes even more important um, to get you there, to keep you there, so you can move on and and do what you love doing is playing baseball and see where that can take you. So his coach, I'm sure, preaches to you every day. If you can't get it done in a classroom, you can almost forget about getting it done on the field because it's, it's they go hand in hand. It's that simple. Um, any yes, idea sir. what you want to major in later on when you get into school? Uh, I'm in between of uh, technology, of uh, being a tech, and uh, being a sports manager. Okay, not bad. Uh, favorite baseball player? Ooh. Uh, I got to go with Agon, Adrian Gonzalez. From, used to be the L.A. Dodgers. Yeah, yeah. that's I've never heard a youngster you talk about Adrian Ross Gonzalez. Well, that's like a good it. one. It's outside the box pick there, yes. Coach. I got to ask you your, yours now. Who's your favorite all time? Oh, you can't do that to me. I, I got I got too, too many, many guys I respect around here. You know, Mike Mike Cuddy's good buddies. David's a good buddy with mine. You know, I, I like Jimmy. You know, CT out in Los Angeles has started to play really well as a young guy. Well, let me um, – I'll make it easy for you because we do love right. our local guys because, I yeah. mean, they just get it done. So many of them too. Let's take them out of the picture right now and send you back to your – the age of Antonio. When you were Antonio's age, who was your guy? Oh, I, I got to go retired and I got to go A-Rod. I just, you know, right. I, I, I think A-Rod just – to me, when you leave a profession, whether it's baseball or – a CEO of a company or whatever, you, you have, even a teaching profession, you have to have, if you have the respect of your comrades, that's the greatest award you could ever have. And I, and I think, you know, how him, how he went out is just amazing. And then people are still talking about him today. A few more minutes here with the head baseball coach of the Western Branch Bruins. That's Roland Wright, as well as one of his standout players, Antonio Velasquez, here on High School Sports Talk, presented by VirginiaPreps.com on ESPN Radio 94.1. Antonio committed to play baseball the next level for Bryant and Stratton, and the Bruins coming off an impressive 6-2 to two win over Nova in Florida, the number 21-ranked team in the country, according to USA today. And uh, Coach, tell us about some more of these players on this team. We know about Micah Brown and Antonio being some of the headliners, and I think you got a really talented freshman, uh, Harrison Didowick. Is that the AD, Mark Didowick's son? Yeah, I don't put him on the spot like that, but yeah, that's that's his son. <laughs> uh, you know, it's kind of unique. We we have, you know, last year we lost our shortstop, Connor Butler, our center fielder, Connor Epley, and our catcher, uh, Ethan Alexander. So we, we knew we had sure. some holes to fill. And I think, you know, going back a little bit, um, you know, Antonio talked about the legacy before I get in our players. Uh, I think, you know, this year I did a horrendous job at the beginning of the season kind of helping these guys find their own identity. You know, our success from years past kind of hinder us at the beginning of the season that, and us finding our own identity. And I think this year that kind of hindered us a little bit. And these guys, I told them, I said, look, you're not 2018, you're 2019. Find your own identity. And, and I think they've done that tremendously right now. But Kyle Carlson starts for us at third. And then uh, Reed Long is, is our second pitcher, who, who is also 4-1, um, has taken a lot of wins with Antonio. So Antonio, with a two-game week, Antonio has one and, and Reed has the other one. Um, his brother, Roberto, plays second for us. Uh, we, we, the, Harrison is a true freshman. Uh, we start him at right field, left field, and then when um, 
Antonio pitches, he goes to first, but he's now hitting in our four hole. And he had a big hit uh, Tuesday night against North Broward Prep. We were down four to one in the seventh, and we kind of played our baseball, just kind of kept punching, 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 punching. We had a couple base hits, ended up, and I turned around, it was four to four, and I'm like, wow. And we got two outs, bases loaded, and he hits an RBI single to actually put us ahead five four. And we ended up winning that game. So he has, he's handled the moment as a freshman. You know, normally as a freshman, we just ask him to play defense. But he's kind of done both of them. And, yeah, he's our athletic director's uh, son. But he, he's done a nice job. And then Brody Spizak has filled in as our catcher. And, and Antonio will tell you he's done a nice job handling our pitching staff. And then Jalen Perez has, has filled in at the shortstop spot uh, with the graduation of Connor Butler. But – Again, you know, in 2018, we were fortunate to get to the final. We had no D1 guys, uh, no big college commitment, and and we're just kind of blue collar a blue collar team. We just kind of work and grind every day. And uh, this team is the same way. We don't we don't have any Division One guys. We don't have any Division One commitments, but we play the game the right way sometimes, and we play the game hard. And fortunately, that's been a good recipe to get us into June, and and that's kind of what we're looking to do again this year. Well, so many hardworking uh, upperclassmen and underclassmen, and certainly that championship pedigree, Ed. Well, first of all, I've got to say, uh, Roland, you got the AD son, so obviously uh, to extend that contract, you've got to give him some at-bats. Well, it was funny because I said, who's going to be the third person if we have a parent conflict? You know, you're you're the AD, so who's you're going to switch chairs? We're going to have to have three chairs in there, and he switches back and forth. But, you know, I, I'll give Mr. Didowick a, a lot of credit. He's kind of stayed away and let Harrison do his own thing, and and Harrison's kind of done his own thing. And it's pretty cool with my twins in seventh grade, if they survive enough to play for me in two years, he's kind of relayed to them how it is to play for, you know, your dad being so close to the program. But, you know, I give Mr. Didowick credit. He, you know, he went down to Florida with us, was our third driver. And, and you know, he's learning how to be a parent at a high level. And it's, it's kind of neat to see. Hey, Antonio, I got to ask you. Um, we always ask this to the coaches. and We've got Roland, Coach Wright's opinion in the past. Southeastern just is some pretty tough baseball. Um, I'm, a, I'm a Nazarene River a teacher, coach. I coach basketball over there, so I know how good their program is. As a player, how do you how do you shape up the Southeastern District in terms of what does it do for you when you get into playoff time? Oh, when it comes into playoff time, we see – we just got to play our game. Yes, we've seen them in the front. It, they beat us, okay. But we're a whole different team once we come back the second half. Uh, we just try to play as hard as we can. The Southeastern District is very hard to get out of, but I think it's a great fit because we see very good teams, and once we get out of there, we're just going to see good teams, good teams. So we're kind of used to it. So we're just going to get used to it and just start hitting, start pitching, uh, play defense as good as we can. And if I'm if I'm, I'm trying to think back and listen to your voice and whatever, and I remember coaching against the Bruin basketball team at Western Branch, and I think you were in that crazy group, the Bruin Crazies, uh. that were telling me to keep sweat, sweat, Ed, sweat. I think you were in the second row, third from the right. Am I correct? Probably. Yeah, I got you. But you know what? I love that group, though. Let me, a lot of, some coaches get mad. I'm telling you, I look forward to it because I think it's the greatest thing going when we get our uh, those uh, uh, prep, those oh, yeah. type of clubs that really are cheering. Fan like bases that. for sure are very I love passionate. It. Yeah, but no doubt the Bruin Crazy is uh, very, very passionate about their team. And Ed was sweating, by the way. Hey, uh, Coach, uh, we'll get you guys out here in a second. Um, when you come back from break, who do you have uh, coming back in the district, or do you have an out-of-district game when you return? Uh, Matt, we go we go through Murder's Row, man. We uh, we got to go to Great Bridge on Tuesday, who's playing good baseball. They beat Kelm over the break. Uh, we've got a team from New York coming out, like Xavier. They're in town for their spring break trip, so we're going to play them Wednesday. And then we host Ed's, Ed's boys, and, and Mark Struff has done a tremendous job with this young group of kids he's got. You know, he's got uh, Caleb Pittman throwing very well, but, you know, they're a very young team that Mark has them going in the right direction. And then, you know, we've got two tough ones, and I think the following week, heck, we might even have Hank at Hickory. So we, we go through Murder's Road a little bit. Uh, you know, welcome back to Virginia. And, uh, but we'll, you know, we, 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 we like to think we got our feet on our, on our <coughs> excuse me, on us right now and going in the right direction. But, uh, you know, our guys know this is challenge time. You know, like everybody knows in, in around an area, you, you got to build a foundation and, and basically trying to jockey for position in this regional pairing and then hoping you can make a late run in May and June and, you know, 
we feel like we've prepared our kids for next week, but I tell you what, man, we're going to Great Bridge. It's going to be tough, and, and Dad's guys are coming to us on Thursday. It's going to be tough. It's just, you know, step up and play, and let's see what happens. Well, I'm, we're in the prediction business, and I'm not trying to put pressure on you guys, but I'm sure it'll back me up on this. There's so many good teams in the Southeastern District with your squad and Nansman River and Hickory and Great Bridge. Gary Spedden at Grassville got career win 400 last night. I'm probably forgetting a few good ones, Ed. I'm, I see at least two, three, maybe four or five teams from the Southeastern making states this year for baseball. What do you think? Yeah, it could very well be. Um, before oh, we yeah, let you yeah. go, Antonio, I have to ask you, when Coach Wright is not around <laughs> – because these baseball coaches, managers can can go, do some crazy things on the field. Just watching the major league managers when they get thrown out of games, kicking dirt, picking up the bases, throwing them. Who imitates Coach Wright the best on the team? Ooh. My yeah. wife. Yeah, I was Miss Sarah. <laughs> My wife. No, I think about that would be Miss Sarah. Okay, that'll save you because you won't throw one of your teammates under the bus. Or even yourself. And he can't make her run laps, so. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, thank you so much for the time. Congrats on the fine season so far. We wish you all the best moving forward and look forward to talking to you again down the road, all right? That's it. Thank you. All, all right. right. Guys, Antonio good luck to you. Velasquez and Coach Roland Wright. Matt, Dad, thank you for having us, brother. Thank you for doing what you do for local sports, my man. You, you appreciate bet. it. It makes it easy when you got guys, guys like you out there. Thanks, guys. Roland Wright, the head baseball coach of the Western Branch Bruins, and Antonio Velasquez, headed to Bryant and Stratton, our guest here on High School Sports Talk, presented by VirginiaPreps.com. And no surprise, they're going to be in the hunt. And I tell you what, we mentioned Gary Spen got 400th win last night. We're going to try to effort him on perhaps next week from Grassville. They beat East Syracuse Manoa out of New York, 8-1. to one. Hickory's very strong. Nansman, you know, Coach Stufel's team, is, they've been in the state championship before, as have Hickory and Great Bridge. That's really, I, I dare say, and I don't know the state as well versed in baseball to do basketball football, there's not a better district in the state. And that is not meant in any slight towards the beach, the eastern, the peninsula, the Bay Rivers, or anyone else across Virginia. But, I mean, the results speak for themselves. Yeah, and I, and I think once you step outside of southeastern district, I dare say the beach is right there. Probably the second uh, best. Yeah, yeah, right behind them. So, uh, you know, eastern district, peninsula, and when we look at the 757 area, maybe not quite as strong, but there are higher teams like Mentzville, Hampton, okay? Yeah. They take that. They take the Peninsula District to a higher level because those two, those are a couple of teams that kind of carry that that district. But when you talk from top to bottom, the last place team, I think I give the nod to Southeastern, and I think the beach slips in right behind them. Yeah, they're six seven deep for sure, and maybe you get even a PD like we saw in basketball a couple of years ago with Hampton Bethel getting to states. You never know. You could see in Class Five, I dare say, a Hampton Minchfield meet more than just twice. Although you got teams still working in the way with you think of Hickory and others. So there you have it. More to do here on High School Sports Talk, presented by VirginiaPreps dot com. Give us a call at seven five seven six eight seven ninety four ninety four right here on ESPN Radio ninety four point one. This is High School Sports Talk, presented by VirginiaPreps.com on ESPN Radio 94.1. Back here on High School Sports Talk, presented by VirginiaPreps.com on ESPN Radio 94.1 on this Easter weekend. I'm Matt Hatfield with the coach, Ed Young, Thomas Simmons, the other side of the glass as well. How's our NBA playoff picks doing, by the way? Anybody keeping track of that? No idea? I know we I know we took uh, Oklahoma City and that that it turned out well he won yeah. last night though down two they're not out of it they're not, they're not out of the woods as they say <laughs> some people took Golden State to sweep that ain't happening no I think we had five I, I'm pretty sure one of us had five or four actually you know what I think I had the sheet in my bag here while while I look for the, I had, sheet, I had the you, Sixers you tell us what you think Ed I had, I had the Sixers uh, over the Nets but I figured that was going to be in five or six um. Jazz Rockets. I found I the sheet of integrity. Okay, so or no integrity. By the way, before I give you that, we want to tell you that Norfolk Tides baseball doubleheader today due to last night's game getting rained out. And what does that mean? Well, that means that the high school baseball game taking place at Harbor Park between Lake Taylor and Indian River has moved up. It originally was scheduled for 3.30 with gates opening at 3. Instead... Instead, the Lake Taylor Indian River game will begin at 1.30. Gates open at 1 o'clock over there at Harbor Park today. So you want to go check out some high school baseball, see uh, Lake Taylor and Indian River go mano a mano. That's what they call it. It's, I guess, what was Hank Sawyer, our buddy, called the military highway rivalry, right? When they played in football, he called it something like that. So they're not in the same districts. 
Lake Taylor and the Eastern and Indian River and the Southeastern. And then there's a double header with the tides. Hits our airwaves at 450. First pitch of the first game at 505. And then right before the second game, O'Shane Zimenez of Old Dominion, the edge rusher, sack artist for the Monarchs, will be throwing out the ceremonial first pitch and then signing autographs on the concourse. So uh, go check that out tonight at Harbor Park if you have nothing going on. And uh, you'll hear it right here on ESPN Radio 94.1 as part of the double dip with the Tides taking on the Charlotte Knights, the AAA affiliate of the Chicago White Sox. We had someone in the big leagues with the White Sox from here. I don't think it was. Neil Ramirez was the Indians out of Kemsville High. I've, I've completely forgot who it was. Danny Hudson, the pitcher? Daniel Hudson under Princess Anne was there at one time, wasn't he? I don't think he's still there. He's not there now. Yeah. He was also one time with the Diamondbacks. He'd been been around. He'd been a few times. In the desert. He was was snake bit, I think, out there. It happened. What happens when you play for the the, the Diamondbacks? Hey, now, come on. Your career goes either south. We should never get rid of Justin Upton. I'm still upset about that. And Paul Goldschmidt now. All right, what we did did at the end of the show last week, so some might not have heard it, give you a little update on it. Hey, somebody just texted me, Sarah. Are we taking calls? Yes. We are. We always take calls. Six, eight, seven, nine, eight. Well, why would they text you? Why don't they call in yeah, and why ask? Yeah, take this call. That's Come the, on now. That's, by the way, that drives me up a wall. People will actually, when they know you're on the air, they call you or text you. Yeah, I'm, I'm on the Certain air family air. members, I won't, I won't name names. They may or may not be listening. I still love you, everybody. I'm not saying it. You know, just, but it's like they call. And, and coaches, too. You know who some of the coaches are. Frequent callers of mine, yeah. and they have no idea that you know we're on the air. We've been on the air at ten to noon all the time. But fortunately, we've got your do- barking dog under control. What'd you give him a new new uh, dish of food? No, I gave him some meds. Oh, you gave him meds? Okay, yeah, that, that keep him quiet. Did you? Yeah. Know, did six you, eight seven ninety four ninety four. Come on, call in. Area code seven five seven. We'll talk. We'll take you outside of seven five seven. Anybody, call in if you're out there riding around and you're in your, you're stuck in traffic because. That's a little heavy this weekend. It is Easter weekend. So. I know you missed last night seven five seven at six. You were here for uh, here with us Thursday night, and we had our buddy Ray from Wild Wing in, and we had a, had a good time uh, with that. And then I went over to the uh, Chesapeake Sports Club, but I want to get that out there too. By the way, the Chesapeake Sports Club, we just had on Roland Wright, head baseball coach of the Western Branch Bruins, and Antonio Velasquez, one of his standouts. They honored the top male athlete and the top female athlete at the eighth annual Jamboree for the Chesapeake Sports Club here. As I show you the uh, program booklet here, Goose Gossage was the keynote speaker of uh, the New York Yankees World Series team. 1978 told some great stories. Uh, Jim Catfish Hunter, how he inspired him, and going at it with Billy Martin, which you know was great. And then also his uh, duel with uh, the one and only Kirk Gibson, who once upon a time managed the Diamondbacks, but well, no, well more for his uh, batting with the LA Dodgers, and. Uh, Anyhow, uh, it was a fun time out there for that. But our trivia question, I'm going to get to that, back to the Goose Gotcha thing last night. NFL draft related. You know the last time Virginia Tech didn't have a player taken in the NFL draft? You know when it was? And it might not happen this year. I'm holding out hope for Ricky Walker out of Bethel High School, the defensive lineman. Holding out hope. He's a couple of mock drafts I've seen have him 6th, 7th round, but the main ones I looked at yesterday did not have anybody from the Hokies getting taken. Anybody. Amazing. That is startling, isn't it? I think we'd have to go back into the ni- early 90s. Y- you're, you're very good. You must have listened to the show last night. No, I tried to. It was out of range. Out of range. Well, that's right. You were an 804. Can I give, let me give you the answer? Give me the answer. 1993. I was going to say 92. Yeah. Ah. Amazing, isn't it? It really is. Because that... They usually have somebody right. They got somebody in there. We don't have any local players in the mock drafts that I've been looking at getting projected to get taken. Uh, we do have three players who played high school football, actually four in our state, projected to get drafted in Cleveland Farrell out of Benedictine, edge rusher. Most mocks have him going in the first round out of Clemson. Second round. Remember Juan Thornhill? We called a couple of his games for Alta Vista in the state basketball championship, defensive back for UVA. He's in a lot of second rounds for the mock drafts. Even some have him sneaking into the late first round. And then another player we called, in fact, you called his state basketball championship, I think, when he played for a year as a junior at Colonial Fords, and he decided to focus on football. Gary Jennings, the year they beat Lancetown, yeah, wide yeah. receiver out of Pretty, West Virginia. Really good athlete. Yeah, I remember Jennings' kid. He's uh, projected in some of the mocks to go fifth round. Then one mock draft has Tim Harris of Verina, 
uh, and UVA defensive back going late seventh round. So uh, doesn't look like we might we might go over after the five draft picks last year. They did honor the coach of the year for Chesapeake, the male athlete of the year, and the female athlete of the year. Katie Duke, the ninth year field hockey coach at Great Bridge, was the Chesapeake Sports Club's coach of the year, doing an outstanding job over there, including uh, three regional championship finishes and been to the state tournament uh, multiple times. The male athlete of the year was none other than Cameron Kelly of Oscar Smith, who we haven't really discussed it on this show, Ed. He was initially going to go to Auburn and decided with some family situations involving his mom and sister to be closer to home and go to UNC. The fine uh, two-way athlete for Oscar Smith headed to the Tar Heels and will play defensive back there for Mac Brown, who is really recruiting the area well with Dre Bly. Former Western Branch standout on his staff. It doesn't look like it will slow down anytime soon. They just got a commitment from Lamarion James about a month or so ago from Indian River. So UNC back invading the 757. Does that surprise you any or no? Now, they used to have a stronghold in this area of, of players. Um, and I wonder what that happened over the years. Obviously, coaching staffs changed, recruiting uh, ideas changed, and they go elsewhere. But uh, uh, they used to, I remember having a very strong grip on in the time one area for football. And uh, we'll see with Virginia Tech and UVA not really dominating the landscape here on a recruiting front, if that will continue and the Tar Heels continue to get more players. I have a hunch that that's not the last we hear of uh, UNC getting football players here for this upcoming 2020 class. And the female athlete of the year for Chesapeake was Morgan Murphy out of Grassfield High School, carrying a 4.42 GPA, had 212 strikeouts last year, just a dazzling pitcher for Grassfield softball also batted 412 six home runs and she's going to uva to continue her softball career so kudos to morgan and cam kelly and uh, coach duke getting honored at chesapeake sports club on thursday night that was a fun time and uh, goose gossage the keynote speaker he told some great stories i said this last night he's a cross between you know i love my photo comparisons guys he's a cross between hulk hogan and tony kornheiser goose gossage it's a cross between those two Got the mustache. Did, did he have the mustache? He yeah, listen, him. if you put the little Hulkamania uh, banner on him, or what a head, bandana on him, he'd be he'd be the Hulkster, and he looks a little bit like Cornizer in the face, too. So there you have it. But Pretty a fun question. time hearing him. You, you already know it. I already know it? Yeah. Goose's real first name. Well, I'm not going to give it away. We don't have anything to give away with that, though. No, I'm just wondering if you, if you knew it. I know it. Without looking it up. You're in the book looking it up. I know it. I'm just making sure it's in the book. It's not in the book. Yeah, I'm telling you, it's not in the book, seriously. Because it's kind of funny to see, you know, I mean, that's what he was known as, his whole career yeah, goose. I thought it was in the but book, though. But what's his real name, his government name, so to speak? It is on, actually, it is in the book, but not printed. You see where it is? It is there. Does Thomas know? Do you know what his real first name is? Any idea? You want to take a stab at it? Is it another G word? No, it's not a G. I but, no can idea. I give him the letter it starts with? No. Richard. Look at that. Is it really? It really is. He didn't no look way. that up. He, what a guess. That's not true. It is. Richard, Richard Goose Gossett, Gossett, yeah. All Richard right, I'm going to go buy a lottery Gossett. ticket after this. Go buy a lottery, get a lottery ticket. ticket. Get that, win that $5. Come on. And then when the Sixers bowl their 2-1 lead, don't blame it on us. We have more to do here on High School Sports Talk. Give us a call at 757-687-9494. Your home for sports. ESPN Radio 94.1. Now back to High School Sports Talk on ESPN Radio 94.1. Presented by VirginiaPreps.com. Here's Matt Hatfield. And Coach Ed Young. Welcome back to High School Sports Talk here on a Saturday morning. I am the coach, Ed Young. My partner is Matt Hatfield. And he got a chance at the uh, PIT this week to catch up with Marcus Carter of CNU out of Bruton High School in Williamsburg, who had a tremendous career at CNU. So let's hear what Matt had to say with Marcus here on ESPN Radio 94.1. Here on ESPN Radio 94.1, Matt Hatfield joined by a special guest. He starred at Bruton High School in Williamsburg, got to a state championship game and a two-time All-American at Christopher Newport University. We're joined by Marcus Carter here. Marcus, uh, first off, congrats on the great finish to your captain season. How you been? Thank you. I've been good. I've been good. You know, just adjusting to this life after the season. You know, it's been a really long season. I've been working my butt off since um, August, along with my other teammates. Um, so, you know, right now it's a little preparing for graduation. So, trying to do everything, get, make sure I'm, I'm walking across that stage in May. Yeah, it's kind of surreal for us having watched you really burst onto the scene and dominate at the uh, Hampton Roads Fall League over there when you were at Bruton, and then yeah. you along with Lonnie Swinton and Capri Doucette leading that Bruton team to a state championship. For you, is it a little bit 
hard to fathom that it's it's over here, the high school and college journey? Or? Yeah, you know, it's, it's it's been a long journey, especially going all the way back from high school and, like, the amount of games, the amount of memories I've made from high school all the way to college and then just, like, playing in college, you know, being able to go to two Final Fours with my teammates, you know, it's, 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 hard, it's hard for just – uh, player to say they've been to one, so to say I've been to two, you know, that, that's just been a fabulous and just like the amount of memories I've made. So, you know, hopefully it's not the end end yet for basketball, but you know, for, for right now what I've done so far, you know, I, I love what I've done so far. So sure, we'll hit on your career at senior in a second, but kind of take me back to when your high school career ended. You were so close to capturing the ultimate state championship at Bruton, and you had some Division One opportunities. I don't think they were plentiful, but you had a couple for you. A lot of kids are going through it this year and going to go through it for years to come. Being those, you know how it is. The, the gap between a high end D three player and a low end D one player is not that great. Take me back to when you ended up at CNU and that whole process, how it unfolded for you. Yeah, so like you know, I had like. In the year, I kind of waited. Um, had UMES as an offer. It's mainly just short. Yeah, mainly just short, and I took uh, took that. I uh, went with it, um, you know, but it just wasn't to me. It wasn't the fit. You know, um, most everybody says like you gotta go do, you gotta go Division One, you gotta go Division One. And like what I've been trying to tell kids nowadays is just that, like, like yeah, you can have the D one talent, but like you also want to go somewhere where you know you're gonna feel like home. You know, some you know some, somewhere where you're gonna be able to compete um, every day. And, and also, you know, the main goal is what you're growing up when you're younger. It's like, 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 hey, like at some point, I want to be playing in March, at the end of March, you know. So, like, you know, you know just coming out of high school, like I, I had that. I was listening to everybody, go, D, go D1, go D1. But, then, you know, to my heart, I, I felt like even though I went and made my dream come true, like I could sign a national letter to go to Division One, but it just wasn't the right fit for me. And so when I came to Christopher Newport, um, late that summer and then you know everything just like clicked like and it just felt like home i felt like i had like the closest brothers around me and like the whole community just surrounded me and just brought me in and it just felt great to be to be where i was at at christopher newport when you got hit on it you were kind of in that sort of that same realm of like i, I know i can play d1 and i'm better than some guys that are going d1 when did you kind of grasp like all right this is the right fit for me was it not only until your career started taking off at cnu or were you and in your career when did it kind of click for you like all right i made the right decision for me it actually kind of started like a month in okay. um, my freshman year, you know, just um, hanging out with the guys, connecting with the guys, the workouts we were doing, you know, and it, it was it was something I was it's something I was like, I mean, it was something new to me, but it's something like I've kind of been used to growing up, you know, I'm growing up with, and all the guys had the same mindset, you know, they wanted to work, they wanted to get better. It's a whole bunch of kids that was just like me that were overlooked, and so and. The, we always had a chip, like some of us ain't win that um, state championships. So, you know, we all had that chip. We was like more people that, that knew exactly how it was and we all wanted to we all wanted to grind to get better. You know, we had this big chip on our shoulder. So coming there like within that first month and just meeting the guys and everybody, it's just like I I, I knew this was like 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 it's, it's, it's no place like there's nowhere I can go anywhere, anywhere else. Talking with Marcus Carter out of Bruton High School and a two-time All-American at Christopher Newport University where he helped the captains reach the Division Three Final Four here on ESPN Radio 94.1. For you being an All-American, not once, but more than once, twice, how did that uh, sink in for you as you kind of process, wow, I'm one of the very best in this whole country at the level I'm playing? You know, I've, you know, I've always had that in my mind. Like, I'm, I know I'm one of the best. But, you know, you got to go out there every night and prove it. You know, some games are bigger than others. I feel like on games that are bigger, I, I, I tend to rise to the occasion. And like throughout the season, you know, the season's really, the season's really long, and when you're playing a lot of teams, that's going to scout you really hard. So you know, just to be able to get that all, all American at least the second time, the second time was the more meaningful one for me, especially coming off all the, the two surgeries I had, and then then later my, late in my senior year I had the knee injury. You know, just to be able to still make it on that level, that was more that, that was more meaningful to me to get that second all um, the second all American. Knee injury that happened was it the Virginia Western game? No, it was Sal- um, Sal- Salisbury at home. So. Yeah. Was there any doubt that ever crept in when you had the injuries? Like, man, maybe this is, this could be coming to a finish, or did you know, like, hey, I can bounce back from this? this you know, I just, you know, I've been through it with the, with the ankle and with the two surgeries. So I'm just like, I'm like, just give me the time. I know I can bounce back. It's not, I'm not going to put it in my head, like, like I'm just going to put it, 
go back and just like try to think about it too much. Just go out there and play. I mean, I've been doing it my whole life. You know, I play with injuries. I've done it. But you know, I got the group of guys right behind me. I mean, even the games I were out. I mean, they played. To, they played great. So just knowing I'll come. I'll come back, and I'm like, okay, like even me at maybe like 60 percent is going to help us boost up a little more than me coming back even at 100 percent is going to make is going to make us really hard to beat, and we're already a hard team to beat. Some of the Final Four experience for uh, for me, if you can. Um, I know you were a couple wins shy of the yeah. ultimate prize and winning the national championship, but to get to that point and how difficult it was, what did that mean for you? You know, just this past Final Four, this this year, it was meaningful because throughout the media, we've heard that we weren't going to make it far. They, all, I mean, we always had the doubts. Um, you know, we started off the year like unranged, and then we finally came ranked. Being a Randolph Macon, who was a good team, and you know, you kind of just kept staying right behind them throughout the whole entire year. You know, it's a lot of maybe D3 reporters that kind of had us just like, oh, they're not going to get far, especially when we got into the tournament. It was like we were, we were the underdogs, even on the home court. We were, sometimes you could feel like some like people might make it feel like it's the, we're the underdog at it some point. It had to feel a little bit like your high school career when you were yeah. rooting, kind of going back to like, all right, these teams we're seeing that are 4A, 5A, 6A, yeah. we know we're as good as them, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so like you know, just that being the underdog, and and we and we hear the noise, we hear we hear what they're saying, and um, you know, but we we kept our we kept our our, our mind straight and focus on the goal at a task, but you know. We was coming in, you know, the guys that do the D3 brackets, you know, they probably had us losing when we got to the Sweet 16. And then when we won the Sweet 16, we beat Hamilton at Hamilton. We, so, you know, they had us and they'd be go, play, go on and play Williams in the Elite Eight. And Williams played in that gym two, three times. And so they, they knew the feel of the court unlike us. And then we go beat them, and they're a really great team. So, And we, know, and we knew we started busting people's brackets that, that actually do the Division Three ones. We, and then we just knew the media wasn't like – they, they do against us, but, you know, we feel like after the season we earned their respect. And, like, that's meaningful in itself to, like, let you kind of prove people wrong and, like, they actually got – you gave they earn you earned their respect now sure. that I'm playing throughout that whole entire year. So, getting to the Final Four the way we did and with all the challenges we had um, inside the team, outside the team, you know, it's, it, was, it was good. It was meaningful. It was good. When you got down in that game but even fought back to the finish, I know you didn't come up with the win, but you were down in that game and still, yeah. I think, kind of was the model of what you guys were all year probably. Yeah, you know, that, that, that Final Four game, you know, that was, it was tough. It was just – Swarthmore were a really, a really great team, and they earned their way to the championship game. But, um, but you know, we did. We felt like we did what we needed to do. We out rebounded them, had less turnovers than them. Offensive glass, we um, we had more than them. We reached our goal for offensive glass, and just we couldn't hit the shots. The shots wouldn't fall. You know, if we just had maybe shot about 10 percent better. You know, we could have been talking about a whole maybe us in the championship game. Depends on how things play out, but that Final Four game is just like you know we, we played we played hard. Everybody played hard, and you know we, I look, when I look back at it, I said I said I mean we just hit some shots, it would have been fine. So, but um, you know we played our hardest. We did. We got the job done that we needed to get done. But we just, we didn't check off the box for the W. So, but all, 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 overall it was good. It was good. We just couldn't hit a shot, and that's fine. Final one for your Marcus Carter out of Bruton High School. Our guest here on ESPN Radio 94.1, the two-time All-American at Christopher Newport University. Uh, what's next for you? I'm sure you're out here at the PIT watching these guys get ready to take that next step, and you'll be taking that next step too professionally, I imagine, whether it be you know NBA. And there's a guy that's come out and seen you before yeah. NBA, Lamont Struthers, who coaches yeah. at Mitchville, whether it be there or overseas. What, what, what's kind of the next step for you, and who are you leaning on for advice? You know, right now I'm like leaning with Coach Ross, Coach K, and they're, like, they're helping me out. Um, with the process right now, you know it's kind of hard when you, especially when you're a D3 guy. No matter your accolades, you know they look at the Division One guys. So you know it's, it's like another chip on my shoulder again, which I always had my whole life. So, um, so right now I'm just trying to find a find the right avenue to get with an agent, get in the camps and the camps I need to get into, and just hopefully just get the, the interest of teams if it's here in the United States or overseas. And I'm just trying to just do whatever it takes to see if I can just get the one just the one instant I mean the one look, the one camp I can get to, just the one tryout or if it's just overseas, one workout, you know, just whatever 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 I can do just to get there, you know. So I know it's a tough road for where I came from, but you know, it's another chip on my shoulder, it's another challenge I have to overcome. And you know, I'm I'm ready for it. You know, I I'm sacrificing this summer to try to, to try to do it. Um, I, I thought I, after the season I was going to go just work, but I say, you know what? I, I just can't lead this out. Lead this out. I'm, I got to give it a try. So I'm, I'm going to go all out this summer and try to. Well, hope, hopefully, as everything works out, I'll be playing 
pro here, playing pro overseas. But right now, right now, I'm just trying to go through all the steps with the coaches right now and help me lead the way right now. We started here in Hampton Roads at Bruton and then at college at Christopher Newport University in the pro level, the next challenge for Marcus Carter. Thank you so much. Congrats on a great career, and uh, we'll be rooting for you, all right? Thank you, boss. Appreciate it. So that was Marcus Carter out of Bruton High School and Christopher Newport University, the two-time All-American. We caught up with him at the PIT earlier this week just watching some of the action after helping lead the captains to the Division Three Final Four. It's high school sports talk presented by VirginiaPreps.com on ESPN Radio 94.1. Matt Hatfield here with the coach, Ed Young. And Ed, going to be hard for Coach K, as you heard him say, that's John Krikorian, not the other Coach K, to replace Marcus Carter's 17-plus points per game, the 7-plus rebounds per game from the guard spot and all the leadership. However, they do return after Carter. They lose three seniors. Yet, their next six leading scorers are back, including Jason Egner. We watched him at W.T. Woodson a couple years ago win a state championship for Doug Craig's team. And two local kids, and Adrian Beasley and Dalen McHugh, both out of Tallwood High in Virginia Beach. So the cupboard isn't exactly bare, though Carter is a big loss. Yeah, the, the big thing is the leadership. He really, he really showed great leadership pretty much from day one when he stepped on that court for Coach K and uh, – it, and again, they'll be right back there again next year with all that firepower back. You get a couple key recruits in there. And one thing is about for them, they won't have to rely on whoever comes in as a freshman right off the bat because they got a lot of experience back. When you say back, do you mean back in the Final Four or back in the hunt? I think they're good enough. It's hard to get to the Final Four. Yeah, right? it's, it no really reason. is. I want to put all that pressure like like. I think they'll really be a ranked team, though, again. I think nationally. Yeah, I, they'll deserve. be ranked, and I dare say they'll be back in the NCAA tournament. I would agree with that. So, more to do here on High School Sports Talk presented by VirginiaPreps.com. We got an interview with Tyrod Taylor. We're going to try to squeeze in my John Stockton interview, too. Give us a call at 757 687 9494. And hit us up on Twitter at HS Sports Talk 941 on your home for sports throughout the Commonwealth of Virginia. It's ESPN Radio 94.1. Recapping another busy week of prep sports, it's High School Sports Talk on ESPN Radio 94.1. High School Sports Talk brought to you by VirginiaPreps.com and the Portsmouth Invitational Tournament going out to the PIT tonight. Games all day at Churchland High School in Portsmouth and the championship game commencing at 7 o'clock. PortsmouthInvitational.com for more details. With the coach, Ed Young, I am Matt Hatfield. Thomas Simmons here alongside for the ride as well. Young man by the name of A.J. Robinson, who played his high school basketball at Potomac Falls and Middleburg Academy, went on to play in college at Mary Washington. He caught up for an exclusive interview with L.A. Chargers quarterback Tyrod Taylor from Hampton High. Taylor going into his ninth season in the NFL in his first year with the Chargers. He reflects on his time growing up playing football in Hampton Roads, the four years at Virginia Tech, and what inspires him most to continue to strive for greatness. We hear that now on ESPN Radio 94.1. Old life, so um, it's definitely different um, change-wise as far as being able to communicate with people back on the East Coast, but uh, it's a new opportunity. Um, AJ, a beautiful three, way downtown. What's going on, everyone? Today I'm here with a very special guest, Los Angeles Chargers quarterback Tyrod Taylor. Tyrod is from Virginia, right here in Hampton Roads, and which is actually where both of our parents are from. Uh, I first met Tyrod when I was about eight years old, and I've always been super impressed with how humble he is. If you met him, you wouldn't know that he was a Pro Bowl quarterback or a Super Bowl champion. He's such a nice guy, really down to earth, and I'm really grateful to be able to talk with him today. So, Tyrod, congrats on your new contract with the Chargers. Thank you. Uh, how you like it out in L.A. so far? Um, I'm enjoying it. I've always been on the East Coast my whole life, so um, it's definitely different um, change-wise as far as being able to communicate with people back on the East Coast, but uh, it's a new opportunity, um, and I'm ready to turn the chapter and, and uh, get ready for the next phase. Awesome, awesome. So I know that this will be your ninth season in the NFL, so you've been wow. in the league for almost a decade. Wow. And... Um, when you first like, but when you come back here to Virginia Tech, does it feel like it really wasn't that long ago that you were the quarterback here? And is it crazy to think that now you're the older guy that gets to come back and talk to the younger guys about your experiences? Uh, it's different. Every time I come back here, it's it's a different experience. Um, uh, of course, the the support has always been the same since day one. But I say 
different experience, meaning that it's different memories that, that hit my mind every time that I come back. And they're all positive. Um, right. uh, it was a great times in my four years here. Um, but like you said, I'm going into nine years now, some of the kids that were that are playing here now, some or some of the kids that go here now were in elementary, middle crazy, school. Crazy, yeah. Which is which is crazy because uh, some of those kids I've talked to throughout my time, yeah, all being at Tech, um, coming back as I guess the older guy now. Yeah, I'm yeah. Just trying to shed light on some of the uh, the things that the younger guys will see at the next level if that's what what they um, aspire to be as an NFL player. But just trying to help them out, um, paint a picture for them, and and, and, and give them as much info, information as possible. From the time that you grew up playing little league all the way through Hampton High. What was playing football like in Hampton Roads? I know Hampton High football is a really big deal. So tell me a little bit about the uh, the culture. Uh, it was very competitive. Um, of course, like you said, Hampton High is one of the most uh, historic schools back home. Um, my, my high school alone has seven, 17 state championships, and I was able to add one of those to right. uh, the trophy room. So it's definitely something that we take pride in back awesome. there. Um, I grew up watching Ronald Curry, mm-hmm. who's a big name in the Hampton Roads area. Um, Alan Iverson, watching those guys, Michael Vick, uh, Aaron Brooks. I, the name, the list can go on and on. And I'm just talking about guys from the peninsula. If I went over to uh, Tidewood area, it's even more names. Uh, you have Cam Chancellor, it's Bruce Smith, uh, D'Angelo Hall. This rich tr- tradition down there. And um, when you're from the 757, of course, you compete with one another. Right. But as you get out to college and you get out to the professional leagues, it's basically like Virginia versus everyone. Right. Mentality. It's like so, it's your own team. Yeah. So yeah. Um, we appreciate uh, the competition as, as youngins because it it taught us, uh, first off, how to compete, but also um, how to strive for greatness because we've seen it in our own city. Yeah. Right. Three number one overall picks in wow. two different sports. And professional leagues come from the Hampton Rose area, so that's something uh, to be proud of and to take pride in. Who, who are those? Are those Allen Iverson, Allen Iverson, Michael Vick, and Bruce Smith. Wow, that's awesome. You've done such an excellent job being a positive role model for the kids, especially back in your hometown. I know every year you go back for the Peninsula All Star Football Camp. What is going back and just showing your face and being a positive role model for these kids mean to you? Uh, it means a lot. Um, it's one of the reasons why I started my foundation. I launched it last year, okay. uh, just trying to inspire or inspire kids uh, to be the best version of themselves. Um, I know as a kid myself, seeing those role models or the guys that had made it to the places where I wanted to be, right. come home and, and see uh, those guys personally, I think, kept the dream alive for me and made what a dream at that time become a reality. So I awesome. try to get back and pour as much as I can back into the community, just like I said, to, to give them hope, uh, to give them a dream and um, to inspire them any way that I can. To get the opportunity to play in the NFL is every kid's dream. From the, kid, from the time kids play Little League all the way through high school, they all dream about playing on Sundays for their favorite football team, not to mention being a quarterback, a pro bowler, and a Super Bowl champion like you've already done. So obviously you have outstanding work ethic, but what else do you attribute your successes to? I uh, stand grounded, um, understanding that God placed you here for a reason. Um, God has placed me here for a reason. It's my job to do the best that I can uh, with what he's given me and the ability to do so. So, um, of course, you have to work hard and um, you have to make smart decisions, uh, go about things the right way. Um, opportunities are definitely going to present itself. I would say just be, be, be prepared for each and every opportunity that comes your way and uh, and never get discouraged when things don't go your way. Continue right. to keep pressing forward and keep a positive mindset and positive attitude about things. That's awesome. A lot of times people think that once somebody gets drafted that you know they've, they've made it and it'll last forever. But you know the average NFL career is only three seasons, six seasons for rookies that make the club uh, you know opening day. So tell me about how Tell me about the extra work that you have to do after you get drafted. Uh, yeah, I mean, the goal is not just to make it to the NFL. You want to leave a legacy on the field and off the field. Um, I was fortunate to be drafted into a locker room in 2011 where you had guys uh, like Ray Lewis, uh, Anquan Bowden, Ed Reed, Elodie Nada, Terrell Suggs. Great examples of how to be pros, even learning from Joe. He was a younger uh, player at the time. But uh, had veteran ways, so right. um, I was fortunate to be able to learn from those guys, and um, I appreciate those guys teaching me the way because ultimately it made me become the pro that I am today. And uh, some of the things that I do is definitely because of me seeing those guys day to day, and 
Like I said, everyone's not fortunate to be drafted into a locker room that has that much veteran leadership. Um, one of the, that's one of the rare cases. But I would say to someone that's not uh, drafted into a situation like that to, to find a routine early um, because it's, it's easy to kind of get lost in the mix and thinking that you know all the answers, but that's not the case. Um, as a young athlete, and even as an older athlete, you always striving to be better, uh, striving to learn as much as you can uh, because the game is evolving. And, of course, they want to make the game younger, uh, but you have to go out and show them each and every time that you get a chance that you're here for a reason. You are an inspiration to so many. Who or what inspires you most? Uh, my parents um, inspires me the most. I'm my only child. Uh, parents married, and to see them work day in and work day out, uh, never complain, uh, be able to provide for me, it's definitely something that I took, um, I guess, passion towards, and wanting to be able to put smiles on their faces, of course, uh, for personal gratification as well, too, but also just... Um, God has blessed me with a, with a bunch of things. Uh, that football, through football, being able to travel a bunch, uh, being able to take my parents different places that maybe we wouldn't have been if it wasn't for the opportunity football has gave me. So, um, my parents is definitely a big inspiration. Uh, of course, other players, but I would say the, the two that stick out are my parents. What do you see yourself doing after football? Uh, continue to keep pouring back into the community. Um, I've always been, I've always had a passion for real estate as well. Okay. Um, football is all I've known since I was five years old. Right, I took right. one year off. Uh, so some way it's somehow connected to football, whether it be through uh, mentorships, uh, coaching, I'm not sure. Uh, but I would definitely be connected at some point. Um, but I think, I think at some point, Get into coaching. I'm not sure about it right now, but I, I, I just I think it's out there. I'm not sure at what what, what level, um, but we'll see. I recall my dad bringing me to one of your high school basketball games. Do you think you could have made it to the NBA too? Uh, yes, I'll tell you that. Um, I think people that play with me or in high school as well as AAU would tell you the same. I heard you were a lockdown defender back in the day. For sure. Um, <laughs> there was a good person on other team. I was definitely defending them. Um, I love basketball. I started playing basketball and football at the same age. And up until probably I got to the NFL, I probably played more basketball games, of course, because right. of the frequency of games. I probably played more basketball games than football games. But... Uh, my love has always been with football. I was a very talented player, basketball player, um, and I worked hard at it, but football came natural, and uh, right. just my love for football uh, was more than basketball. Right. I had to choose one or the other when I got to college, <laughs> right. and I ended up choosing football. But I think I could have made it to the NBA. <laughs> it's not that many 6'1 players, though. Right. Uh, but you're pretty yeah. athletic. You could have... You could have made it, you know what I'm saying? The six yeah, one guys. I mean, I would have worked just as hard. Right. Yeah, I would have right. worked just as hard. I know the obstacle would have been definitely tough, but I would have worked just as hard to try to fulfill that dream. With all the physical gifts you possess, the one distinguishing quality about you that I've noticed is your unshakable faith. Where does that come from? Um, something my parents instilled in me. Uh, also, um, continue to just read the Bible. Uh, Grandparents. That's a lot of things that play into that. Right. Um, understanding that I mean, everything's not going to go perfect. Mm -hmm. um, but if you're a believer, um, you also understand that you have to lean on faith in those times, uh, those trying times. Even when things are going good, um, you have to lean on God as well, too. So um, trying times will definitely show you who you are. Right. Uh, not just yourself, but show the people around you who they are, too. So um, faith is definitely something that that I stand firm on um, because without him, I'm nothing. Awesome. Well, Tyrod, everybody here, everybody out here in Virginia is rooting for you out there in L.A. I really appreciate you coming out here today and doing this interview with me. Uh, no, I appreciate you. And I appreciate your time, man. Uh, Thank no. you very much. Yep. Thank you. So that was Tyrod Taylor, the Hampton High product, with uh, A.J. Robinson, a young man uh, who might be doing some work for VirginiaPreps.com. You never know. Here on High School Sports Talk on ESPN Radio 94.1, he played at Potomac Falls and. uh Middleburg Academy, as well as in college at Mary Washington. But uh, Tyrod, you heard the interview there. Ed, uh, your thoughts as he now goes into a situation with the Chargers backing up the 37-year-old Philip Rivers. It seems like Philip Rivers has got to be in his 40s. He's been around forever. He's only 37. Tyrod's 29. Do you think Tyrod is now going to be career backup, or does he end up becoming the starter there or elsewhere, say, when Rivers gives it up? You know, Rivers doesn't get hurt 
very often. No, nah, and he's been durable. So um, he's probably got a couple more years. So I guess Tyrod accepts the fact that he is the backup. Of course, when you're a backup in the NFL, you've got to be ready because the next hit could put you in. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> Rivers decides to hang it up in a couple years. Tyrod's still there. You know, he's a guy that's won in the NFL. He's been a starting quarterback. On a playoff so, team in yeah, Buffalo. Well, yeah, so. And he was on that Super Bowl team backing up Joe Flacco with Baltimore, as you heard there, and um, all the influences in that peninsula there at Hampton, those great the glory days of Hampton, uh, giving them their 17th state championship back in 2005 before he took over for Virginia Tech at QB and in some ways followed in the footsteps of two great ones there. He followed in the footsteps of Ronald Curry, followed in the footsteps of... Michael Marcus Vick and Brian Randall at Virginia Tech as quarterback. So uh, he's been pretty successful, and uh, we'll see what is next for Tyrod as he uh, is out on the West Coast playing. Of course, the Chargers are in my Raiders division, but I love them blue uniforms for the Chargers. The powder blue. The powder blue with the white helmets. They are pretty sweet. Back in the day, San Diego was one of my. I think That's the new primary now. The Raiders. Oh, is, it, is it the new primary? Yep. So it's not the alternate. Wow. Yeah, that, they were like my third best team back in the day. So. Your third. Oh my gosh, with you and your teams. Ugh. I had to, got to keep the Raiders and Steelers up there. I can just After see that, now when, when someone gets a Super Bowl. Ah, they're my fifth best team. I'm rooting for them. But come on. <clears throat> I'm gonna have to come out someday with my rankings. No. Of all the pro leagues. Wait, of all the what? I'm gonna ha- of all the pro leagues from top pro to leagues? bottom. Who's the best? My best team in the NBA, down to worst. Baseball, football, basketball, and hockey. Let me tell you who's not my favorite hockey team, Tampa Bay. Those choking dogs. Right now. They're choking dogs. Made me look like a fool. And the and the West. And the other, yeah, was it the Calgary? Got knocked they, out. They're the one seed. Both of them got knocked yeah, out. That, that's that's some quirky stuff going on in the National Hockey League. Really quirky. We're gonna take another time out. Give us a call at seven five seven six eight seven ninety four ninety four. You want to talk to us? Anything in the world of sports? High school sports is generally our theme here each and every Saturday on ESPN Radio ninety four point one. Thomas Simmons and the Coach Ed Young. I'm Matt Hatfield. Don't go anywhere. It's your favorite sports radio station. What is it? It's ninety four point one ESPN Radio. This is High School Sports Talk, presented by VirginiaPreps.com on ESPN Radio 94.1. Back here on High School Sports Talk, presented by VirginiaPreps.com and the Portsmouth Invitational Tournament. Final day of the PIT today, going out there at Churchill High School in Portsmouth. Next segment of the show, the final one, you'll hear my nostalgia interview with John Stockton. As I'll get teary-eyed during that. With the coach Ed Young, I am Matt Hatfield Thomas Simmons. Why are you shaking your head over there? What? What's unbelievable? That was a good interview with Stockton. I mean, all one right, of the all time greats in the NBA. That's I give right. credit for that. I, Greatest point guard ever, right? Yeah. Mm. Oh, made him pause. Probably magic than Stockton. Yeah, it's pretty hard to take him over. Some magic. people will take Isaiah over Stockton. I take Stockton. Mm-hmm. Hey, before you get to your Tampa Bay Rays thing you wanted to talk about, uh, coming up on Thursday, it's the NFL draft. We'll be out at the Eagles Nest. Both the Nick Cattle Show and the seven five seven and six. But before that, I'll be during the day over at Cox High School in Virginia Beach because a young man by the name of Keontae Jenkins, who a couple years ago played at Bishop Sullivan, transferred over to Cox. He's the younger brother of Levante Taylor, who we've had on the show before from Florida State and Ocean Lakes High School. And I see Levante's starting to play some safety now for the Seminoles. Didn't have the best of seasons at corner. I blame that more on you uh, than me with the interviews because I'm just the jinx for predictions. You're just you're the jinx when they come on and talk with us. Uh, nonetheless, Levante's got a chance to do well at the safety spot. Keontae Jenkins, rising senior. He's a four-star by rivals, and he's making his college choice on Thursday among the schools in consideration. He's got 25 offers. Auburn, Baylor, Duke, East Carolina, Florida. According to the future cast on Virginia Preps and Rivals, there's a new thing called the future cast. You can forecast where a player's going to go. Right now, the leaders for his commitment, Thomas will find this interesting, is TCU is leading the future cast, followed by Florida State, where his brother Levante Taylor is. So you, Ed Young, and I'll give you the schools he's got offers from. You want to hear all 25 of them, or do you not no, care to hear all 25? Right. Give me the serious ones. Auburn, Give me five series schools. Auburn, Florida, Florida State. I'll give you more than five. LSU, Michigan, UNC, Penn State, Pittsburgh, TCU, Tennessee, Virginia Tech. Of that grouping, I'd say, and there might be one or two I'm missing in that grouping. What's Ed Young's personal my, opinion? My, you think he's going to be a horn? When's the last kid from here to go to the Horn Frogs of TCU? I can't, I can't think of anybody. That one. I, I, I want to say because of that, he's not going to TCU. 
It'd be kind of neat if he did. Yeah. I'm not going to make a prediction because I may Florida or may not. Florida State? Know. Where his brother is. That's, That's the second one. So you think it's Florida State? Yeah. I can't see him going to. F- I want to say Florida State. Florida's UNC Tennessee. keep its momentum going in the 757. Good. They could be the dark horse, so to speak. The dark horse, yeah. The dark horse program. Um, of course, they're recruiting Lamarion James from Indian River, who was the Rivals Camp uh, running back MVP last weekend up at uh, John Champ High School for the Rivals Camp. The defensive back MVP was a 757 kid in Tony Grimes, a rising junior out of Princess Anne High in Virginia Beach. Boy, Princess Anne's had some prospects here lately. They haven't had major, major results. They've been better on the football field, but Tony Grimes is a big time defensive back, class of 2021. And uh, Lamarion's expected to be a DB at UNC. I personally think he's going to be a running back or wide receiver just because he's so dynamic with the ball in his hands. That's just my opinion. Uh, so we'll see if they're in the mix or not. Penn I'm, State, I'm, never I'm know. I'm going to stay with Florida State. You're going to go with Florida State. Carolina the Dark Horse. All right, that's what Ed Young says. Anyway, now, Tampa now, Bay Rays, you said you had something to mention about yeah, that. Yeah, at the beginning of the year, I said that uh, I think on the overs and unders, I'd put them on the under. That uh, sounds about right. Watch you want to change your pick? I don't know. They're, they're a little worried. They're a good team to watch. Uh, I know Brandon Lau from Nansen River. Crushing the ball. Yeah, he's he's doing a good job with them. And uh, we got to get him back on the show sometime. Yeah, I, I like to see. I hope they keep winning. But. But. They're in the division with my Yankees. Sorry. And they're in the division with the Red Sox. Don't see it. I think when the, when the dust settles or when the leaves start coming off the tree. That's, that's yeah, I never forgot that when the dust settles. What is what is the, what is that supposed to, the dust settles? That's one of those. Uh, well, baseball they got as the our buddy back. George Carlin used to say one of those phrases that. So oh, yeah, he was great with the phrases. Yeah, he was. <laughs> what he was is great dust settles supposed Who to Who comes be? up with these idiotic statements yeah. and the phrases? Right. Um, I still say the Red Sox will win it. The Yankees will be right behind them. Tampa Bay third. Okay, so what's your point? Tampa Bay's a pretty good team. They might become my. Might become my third best team. Are you really going to say that again? I think I'm going to say it in baseball. Now, I can't put them in football, but I'm going to say baseball. What is wrong with you? Tampa Bay, I think I'm coming down with a sickness in this. In this Probably season. because of me. I've been sneezing and coughing yeah, all over you. Uh, germs throughout this whole office the whole time. I know. We're going to really need to wipe this thing down. I tell you what, the pollen's killing me. You know what else George Carlin said, too? There are nights when the wolves are silent and only the moon howls. One of his things, too. Famous quote. Not, I've not heard that one. Yeah, that's a famous quote. Anyway, give us a call at 757 687 9494. You got a question or a comment, or you want to tell Ed Young how stupid his favorite team's list is, you can do so at 757 687 9494. Hey, one more thing before we go to break here. Did you see, and I saw this last night on, you know, and Thomas probably knows this, all these sitcoms have their reboots. They're doing these reboots, like Murphy Brown's a sitcom reboot on uh, CBS and. I guess they're trying to do a reboot of the Jeffersons. I heard it's coming back with uh, Jamie, Jamie Foxx. Fox. And Wanda Sykes is going to play Wheezy. She should play Florence, not Wheezy. So I want to know on, we'll put this up on our Twitter page and we'll reveal the results next week. If we put Ed Young, if we casted Ed Young in a sitcom reboot, HS Sports Talk 941, hit us up, HS Sports Talk 941, or hit me up know. at Half of Sports. What would be the sitcom you'd put Ed in? Are you going to say coach because you're a coach? Nope. They almost came back with coach, too. Fred G. Sanford. The Sanford is it? No, I don't. I wouldn't put you. That's your favorite show. That's but. my favorite show. That's the one I want to be in. What would you be good in as a sitcom reboot? I got to think about this long and hard here. But I'm taking all suggestions for the sitcom reboot for Coach Ed Young. What would he be good in? For I don't see Coach doesn't work for me for you because you're not a football coach. You're a basketball coach. If you were a football coach, it'd be ideal. But so. Give us your your pick at HS Sports Talk 94. In fact, if someone comes up with a really great one, I might give you a prize, like a Virginia Preps t-shirt or something. Mm-hmm. When we return, we'll hear the uh, John Stockton clip and uh, any phone calls at 757-687-9494. It's your home for sports, ESPN Radio 94.1. And now back to Matthew Hetfield and the evil basketball coach. Blast you, Ed Young! Evil basketball coach. You are pretty evil. No, I'm as, I'm as calm as they come. Um, but I, that little guy running around the studio again, I remember a couple years ago he chased me around here. Um, he did. Maybe that, maybe that's the one of show I should be on. Family guy. You know what? I, well, that would be, well, that's not really a reboot. No, but yeah, I would like to put that. I, I tell you what, I'd pay good money if we get a hold of, what's the guy? Seth MacFarlane, is that the guy that does it? We get him to uh, create an Ed Young character in there. 
All he's got to do is put a little uh, thing of Robert De Niro in there. You're good to go. Or Andy Landers. <laughs> Andy Landers. That's right. You're twin. It's amazing how people fell for that on Facebook. Oh, my goodness. Hmm. Well... You well, anything to say? <laughs> or nothing. You just out of are you are you speechless? Hey, I'm done, man. I'm out of I'm oh, out okay. of all stuff. He's out of words, folks. Ed Young is speechless. Uh, I'm dropping the mic. Drop the mic. Because it's time to hear. Yeah, we're gonna go back in time. Uh, I can't remember what year was. We could get this sponsored, by the way. I don't know. It should say on the little in the YouTube thing. Twenty fourteen, yeah. Twenty fourteen. My partner Matt Hatfield talks to the one and only, one of the all time greats. John Stockton of the Utah Jazz. He was here speaking at the PIT luncheon, and uh, Matt got a chance to speak with one of his big heroes. Let's hear how that interview went. Here with Utah Jazz great and Hall of Famer John Stockton here at the Portsmouth Invitational Tournament Luncheon. And uh, John, about 30 years to the day it is since you participated in this great tournament. Uh, does it bring back some great memories? It does. It does. It was an awful long time ago, and they're, they, they're starting to kind of flood back a little bit now that I'm here and I'm seeing some familiar faces. Sure. What uh, drew you to the PIT? When you were coming out of Gonzaga, good career there, but like you mentioned in the luncheon, really Gonzaga's not the program it is now. It was back then. No, and, and as far as what drew me to this, I, I didn't even know this tournament existed. Our, my coach, Dan Fitzgerald, who's actually our athletic director at the time, um, looked it up, found it, whatever, and then insisted that I try to make every effort to get to it. So um, didn't know much else about it. It's a long ways from home for me. Could you have ever imagined you'd have the career that you did? I mean, you and Carl Malone, arguably the best duo in NBA history. Could you have ever imagined that? No, I couldn't even imagine getting a chance to try out for a team in the NBA. This is so far beyond anything I could have dreamt as a youngster. And, um, it's just been a great ride. It's just been a great ride. I heard a story, correct me if it's not true, that you and Carl were at, I think, the rookie year. Y'all were sitting down in the cafeteria just trying to make it to get a house payment. Was that true? I mean, A little bit different. No, okay. we, we met at the Olympic trials in 84 okay. at a lunch table and sat and shot the breeze for quite a while and became friends over one lunch at an Olympic trials. So, um, no, that the, the rest was not accurate. Okay. A few more for you. Advice to youngsters today, those playing in this tournament or even those in high school, college ball, what are the things you go around, I know you're not playing anymore in, NBA, in the NBA, what are the things you give them advice-wise? Well, there's so much to it, and it depends on, the, on who you're talking to. I mean, you can go on and on with, with little tidbits that you learn over time, but um, I, I started today, and manners is a good start. Say please, say thank you, do the, do the golden rule things, and that gives you a leg up to start with. And then the basketball stuff, um, conditioning and preparation are huge parts of it because you can't control the rest of it. You had so many accomplishments in your great career, assists, steals, so many things that you can go on and on about. But the 82 games in 17 or 19 seasons, how in the world did you do that? Conditioning is such a big deal in today's game, isn't it? It is. Um, you, you just can't survive. The seasons are so long and hard that you can't survive if you take time off. And so uh, my, my conditioning was year-round. Um, I had great people helping me, at, both with the Jazz and with my alma mater, Gonzaga. So, um, yeah, it's a, it's a vital aspect. We all remember the uh, shot that sent you guys to the NBA Finals in 1997. Of course, you went there two times in a row. You won gold medals, which you passed around here today. I know the kids and others enjoyed that. What is your favorite memory from your playing days? Boy, the, the, get, not so much the shot, although the shot was part of it, but getting that opportunity for the first time to go to the NBA Finals. Um, we, we exercised uh, some demons that day. We, we won where people doubted us. Uh, we'd been to the brink a number of times, and to finally cross the threshold and get a chance at the title was was probably the, the basketball highlight for you, me. You guys were easy to root for for a lot of people, including myself. I always thought the second year y'all were better than the Bulls when you lost. I don't know if you felt that or not. I also have argued that if you got to a Game 7 at home, you had some tremendous fans in Utah, the Delta Center was arguably the loudest in the uh, in the whole league. Did you feel like you'd win a Game 7 at home if you ever played it? Oh, absolutely. I, 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 mean, I felt like we were going to win all the games, and clearly we didn't. Um, but those games are close. I mean, like, people people make it sound, make sometimes games sound like routes, and the, the one one point can change the, the whole complexion of a, of a series. So, yeah, it's disappointing, but but it is what it is, and the Bulls earned it. Still fantastic. A couple more for you to let you go, and I appreciate your time talking with the Hall of Famer John Stockton of the Utah Jazz. You're here to watch your son David participate in the PIT. What's that like as a father now? You played in this, now you're watching your son. Well, I've had the opportunity to watch him. He's played at Gonzaga, and that's my hometown, and so I've had a chance to play him a lot. I enjoy watching him. I, I enjoy the way he plays, and it just any time the parents gets to sit around and continue to watch their child participate and compete, um, it, it's icing on the cake. How different is he from Dad? Oh, he's, he's a lot different from Dad. I mean, there's... Uh, 
many, many things that I look at, and I wish that I had incorporated that into my game back in the day. But he's had the, the, uh, the benefit of a lot of years, and he watches and learns. And so I, I enjoy watching to see what he picks up. What do you tell him about uh, going forward? I don't tell him a lot. Uh, just go play, relax and play. And uh, I guess I'd probably tell that to anybody. And lastly, uh, what's John Stockton up to these days? I'm busy. I go to bed tired every night. Um, I dabble in a lot of things, some business, some fun, some coaching, and, and uh, that probably fits somewhere in between those two things. And, um, you know, getting very busy. Well, hey, it was an absolute pleasure watching you, listening to, and speaking with you. Thank you for your Thank time. Thank you. So that was from 2014, our interview at the PIT luncheon with John Stockton, the Hall of Fame point guard, Utah Jazz, when he was watching his son David of Gonzaga play in the PIT. And how do we tie this back into this year's PIT? Well, Chesapeake native Alonzo Morning was in town, I believe last night, or maybe the night before, in fact. He was there for the most recent game from Norfolk Sports Club and watched his son, Trey Morning, of Georgetown, score 17 points on 8 of 14 shooting in defeat. Yeah, I was wondering if Alonzo was going to make that opportunity to come into town. I know he's he was a lot. I think he works with the Miami Heat front office. Uh, but he got a chance to come in and see... Uh, second game. Wasn't there for the first game, yeah. I'm not sure if he'll be there today or not, but uh, there you go. Need to see some of these legends watch their own kids in the PIT. Tells you how long it's been around and some of the great basketball played uh, from a local state point standpoint, statewide, and all across the globe. So that'll do it for this edition of High School Sports Talk presented by VirginiaPreps.com on ESPN Radio 94.1. We thank all the guests and interviews from Roland Wright and Antonio Velasquez of Western Branch to AJ Robinson's interview with Tyrod Taylor. Marcus Carter of CNU at Bruton High School, and John Stockton, as you just heard. For Thomas Simmons, our producer engineer, I'm Matt Hadford. I'm going to go to sleep now. Hey, you got to get locked up for a while because I think you just got me sick. I got my starting to You go back to school next week, don't you? Yeah, I got to go back Monday. I'm going to go back all cantankerous with this Matt Hadfield disease that he put throughout this office and whole building. We're going to have to quarantine the ESPN studios. Well, you'll go back and it'll be a slice of heaven at Nansen River. And we'll talk to you next Saturday, the 27th of April. Enjoy your Easter weekend. It's your home for sports. What is it? ESPN Radio 94.1.